Munich, Germany, a beer drinker's mecca where they take their brewing seriously and follow the German purity law, which has been in existence since 1516 in Bavaria. The law allows zero leeway for craft brewers in Bavaria to add anything to their beer besides the four basic ingredients, hops, yeast, water, and barley. So how do new craft breweries get around such a law? I got to visit Mark Gallo, owner of Hopmeister Brewery, to explain how he gets around the German purity law, how his love for road trips and surfing led him to create the perfect beer for adventurers, and we end the day hiking through the Hochfeld Mountains for an amazing experience for the adventurer at heart. I'm Jeff. I just retired from the military, sold everything I own, and now I'm traveling around the world to learn from brewers, winemakers, distillers, and tell their story. This is my journey of beer, wine, and spirits. Started delivering my first beers in mid of June 2015, and that was actually the, the beginning of Hofmeister. When you focus on your next beers as you're trying to create them, what's your uh, inspiration for them? It's a tough question because um, there is so many influences since I somehow hit the brewing scene with my very small background. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's like really especially in Munich into or open to the new influences. For me, like a beer brewed with fruits is a beer. For me, a beer brewed with salt and coriander is a beer. So I want to call it beer and that's why we came up with the idea of exclusively brewing all our beers that are outside of the purity law abroad. So we go to either the Czech Republic, we go to Austria, where there are no regulations and the European Union regulates and allows to import their beers as beer. So that's what we do. We produce it there, import it as beer, and there we go. We can do whatever we like. The only problem is it makes the beers too expensive and so we're not competitive on the market and it's more like a small scene that hopefully likes our beers. The purity law stands for something that can mean and protect something good but the way it forces us young brewers and more modern brewers to not do what we want to do although we're exclusively using natural ingredients. I mean, we know our farmers well. A lot of them are organically producing their ingredients. So it's, it's ridiculous to, especially for regular ingredients, to collect them, bring them to the Czech Republic to brew beer and bring them back as beer. I mean, what sense does it make? You love traveling, you love surfing, you love mountain climbing, you're just talking about all that. How does that play into the ingredients or, the, or your next beer? That's actually the basis for all my ideas that I put into beers that are more born from my private traveling and sporty activities. I like to be out there, be in the mountains, climb some longer pitches and go surfing and then have a good beer and some good food afterwards, of course, like everybody. <laughs> Most of the beers that you can in the supermarkets aren't so terrific, especially in Germany. Craft beers do a better job and that's why I actually started with craft beers and I want to add some ideas that have got inspired by my traveling and by my outdoor activities like the road trip when traveling through Ireland. I was more influenced that time by a typical uh, traditional beer style, the IPA, like a typical more or less English style IPA. Than, than by specific ingredients that come from, from that country. Focusing on, on, on the beers, I always had like particular stories in mind or particular concepts like the Gipfel Glück, which means the, the joy you feel when you climb up a mountain and have like a long, like today's trip. <laughs> When you're up there and then you come down, sit in a, in a mountain hut and you want to drink some beer, but some refreshing wheat beer, which is most of the time, to me, a bit too heavy, like having this rich, broad body with a lot of yeast and with a lot of carbonization 
doesn't really feel good when you're like really exhausted. I mean, the, the ingredients really give a lot back to your body. Some other idea was creating my version of a international typical bitter beer, which is to me a pale ale, can drink everywhere in the world. I thought, okay, let's give it like a Munich approach. And to me, when I'm traveling, surfing, I love to drink something that's a little bit, that has a little grip, which is a pale ale. And as I've traditionally been surfing for, I think, well, 26 years at the Eisbach River and of course on the ocean, I thought I'd just call it surfer's ale. So it's my Munich approach of surfer's beer. <laughs> Thank you guys, cheers. I want to thank you guys for a great day. I really appreciate it. So, cheers, Prost. Prost.